Hi, PerspectiveWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Friday, September 18th. The coolest air mass of the season so far is moving into the Mid-Atlantic region today. The Northeast U.S., the Great Lakes region will experience some of the coldest temperatures so far this season. In the suburban locations, for example, along the I-95 corridor from D.C. to Philadelphia to New York City, temperatures could bottom out the next few nights in the low or middle 40s, certainly some of the coolest air we've seen so far, but we'll focus in on the tropical scene today as it remains very active in the Atlantic Basin. And of course, we have had a record number of storms for this time of the tropical season. And someone put together this, this map from the Philadelphia National Weather Service office, which is located in Mount Holly, New Jersey, with the uh, first letter of all the storms this year. We are all the way down to W. The next one will be called Wilfred, most likely the one over the southwestern Gulf of Mexico right now will become a named tropical system. If so, it will become Wilfred. After that, we go to the Greek alphabet because we are running out of names. We only go down through W in the uh, alphabet list. The last time we had to go to the Greek alphabet was 2005. We'll have Alpha, Beta, for example. This particular map shows the uh, first letter of the named system at the end of the storm track. For example, HANA ended up dying out over Mexico after taking a path like this. And this just shows all the different spread all the way from the west coast of Africa. V here represents Vicky. And the very first storm of the year, a long time ago, was this A storm, Arthur, which ended up developing east of Florida and then head, headed towards the Outer Banks and died out over the western part of the Atlantic. So, yes, a very active season in the Atlantic Basin, especially in terms of number of storms. Again, the next name system will be Wilfred, and then we'll go to the Greek alphabet after that. Now, we often talk about the accumulated cyclone energy. It's an index used to really measure tropical activity in the Pacific Ocean, in the Atlantic Basin, wherever. And it's uh, probably the best way to measure overall tropical activity because it takes into account not only the number of named storms, but the magnitude. So it, it takes into effect the intensity level and the duration uh, as opposed to just counting the number of storms, because some of the storms that have been named this year in the Atlantic Basin have been rather short-lived and rather weak, only reaching tropical storm status, for example. And we've had only two major hurricanes. One of those is raging right now, Teddy, and we'll focus in on that over the next few minutes. It is now a Category 4 hurricane over the central Atlantic, and Laura was the other major storm. But the accumulated cyclone index is shown here in the Atlantic Basin, 80.7, and what is shown in the parentheses is the uh, climatological average, uh, in this case based on the 1981 to 2010 the tropical activity, the average for that time period. So yes, we are uh, above normal in terms of the ACE in the Atlantic Basin, not surprisingly with all the uh, uh, number of storms that we've had this year. However, the Pacific Ocean is below normal, in some cases well below normal. This is the Northeast Pacific, 51 as opposed to 95, 51 actual, 95 climatological. Northwest Pacific, way below normal, 68 versus 165. And the interesting thing is overall, the Northern Hemisphere is actually below normal. Uh, the Pacific Ocean is by far the largest ocean in the world, about 75% or so of the tropical cyclones form in the Pacific Ocean. So when the Pacific Ocean is below normal, it tends to dominate the northern hemisphere. And again, 220 right now is the ACE value for the northern hemisphere as a whole, and that's as compared with the uh, 331 for the average in the 1981-2010 time period. So looking globally, we're actually below normal, but of course the Atlantic Basin is way above normal for this time of year. Well, speaking of the Atlantic Basin, this is the map put out by the National Hurricane Center, which is based in Miami. Uh, two 
areas of concern right now. One is the, the system over the southwestern Gulf of Mexico is a, currently a, a tropical depression, number 22, very likely to become a tropical storm. And again, it will become Wilfred, the last letter, uh, and then we'll go to the uh, Greek alphabet after that. It has been meandering over the southwest and Gulf of Mexico over the past few days, and these are very warm waters this time of the year. It looks like it'll continue to uh, move very, very slowly and take a turn to the north and then the northwest and very well could uh, come ashore or hang right around the coastline of Texas over the next few days. And even if it does come ashore somewhere along the Texas coastline, perhaps as a as a tropical storm or a hurricane it is likely not to move farther far inland so it, is, it very well could turn from there and then continue to impact the Gulf Coast so we'll have to keep our eye on this again very likely to become a tropical storm may even become a hurricane as it impacts the Gulf Coastal region anywhere from Texas to Louisiana even all the way to the Panhandle region of Florida have, have to stay on guard for this particular system. It is going nowhere fast. We may be dealing with into the early and middle part of next week. Meanwhile, Teddy now categorized as a Category 4 major hurricane, and it is continuing on a track that it will take it pretty close to the island of Bermuda, not necessarily over it, but here is Bermuda, and it will head in that direction. Now, it could... Uh, it, uh, weaken a, a, a tad upon its approach of Bermuda, perhaps back down to a, a Category 3, maybe even a 2, because it will actually move uh, through some, uh, move over some cooler waters that were upwelled, actually uh, uh, by Hurricane Paulette. When it moved over this part of the Atlantic, it uh, caused some churning in the waters, brought some cooler water from beneath down to the surface, and that indeed could weaken uh, Teddy before it gets too close to the island of Bermuda. Now after its encounter with Bermuda, that's when th things become a little bit more complicated. The upper air pattern, as well as the uh, near the surface level, will feature a tremendously strong high pressure system right in this area right here. Uh, southeastern Canada, It'll uh, we'll see it on the surface maps in a moment here. It will be a a very, very strong and expansive blocking type of high. So when Teddy bypasses Bermuda, instead of continuing on a northerly track, it may start to turn to the north and west as it interacts with that strong high pressure system, perhaps ultimately having an impact on Nova Scotia, which is located right here, maybe even Maine, New Brunswick, certainly in the threat area right in this region right here, Nova Scotia. Uh, uh, Maine, New Brunswick, all as a result of this blocking high that will be situated over the southeastern part of Canada. Again, it'll uh, move northerly for a while and then start to turn to the north and west. And uh, a potential impact, let's say around Tuesday or so of next week, in northern New England or the Canadian Maritime provinces. Again, keep a close eye on this in Maine, Nova Scotia especially. New Brunswick for uh, Hurricane Teddy. Of course, the waters get a little bit cooler and cooler, and we'll see if it's able to maintain hurricane status all the way up to that part of North America. Well, here's the latest satellite imagery loop of Hurricane Teddy. Again, it became a Category 4 in the overnight hours. A major hurricane is classified as 3, 4, or 5. A pretty well-defined eye, a pretty symmetrical appearance to it. Maximum sustained winds now at 130 miles per hour should stay as a major hurricane for the next 24 to 48 hours or so. Again, uh, eventually over the weekend, it moves over some cooler water, so it could uh, tend to weaken as it's uh, closing in on the island of Bermuda. Those uh, cooler waters uh, formed after the... Uh, uh, after Hurricane Paulette moved over top of that part of the central Atlantic and caused some upwelling. But again, very well organized Hurricane Teddy, Category 4, as we begin the day on Friday. Well, let's take the big picture look here of the uh, North Atlantic with respect to last night's operational run of the GFS model. And the uh, three main players that we see 
uh, in terms of tropical activity, this represents the uh, remains of Hurricane uh, Paulette. It caused some heavy rainfall from Virginia down across the Carolinas into Georgia yesterday across the Delmarva Peninsula. Uh, did not make it as far, let's say, as Philadelphia, but D.C. got some decent rainfall out of the remains of Paulette, now off the coast and moving away into the cooler waters of the North Atlantic. Meanwhile, here is our system over the southwest and Gulf of Mexico on the verge of becoming Tropical Storm Wilfred. Again, it looks like it'll meander and then take kind of a turn to the north and west towards the Texas coastline. Meanwhile, here is Hurricane Teddy, again, a major Category 4 hurricane. This morning, Island of Bermuda is located right at the tip of this arrow here. It'll head in that direction and then ultimately take a turn north and west towards Nova Scotia, Maine, New Brunswick. Let's move forward now here and watch the next couple of days. Here we are now into tomorrow morning, Saturday morning. Still, system tropical depression number 22, I believe it was, meandering over the western Gulf of Mexico. Here is Hurricane Teddy, and you notice it, uh, it did not really intensify. In fact, it may have a week in a millibar or two in this 24-hour period. Again, it will be kind of heading towards some slightly cooler waters in the Atlantic. Here we are now, tomorrow evening, Saturday evening. And look at this expanse of high-pressure system. 1031 millibar low over southeastern Canada. That is the anchor for the cool air mass, the coldest air of the season so far. Uh, that's pouring into the Mid-Atlantic region today on strong northwest winds, the northeast U.S. Great Lakes region. This is your blocking high, a very, very expansive high-pressure system that ultimately Teddy will have an interaction with. And again, it'll uh, probably cause a shift from a northerly direction to northwest, and that uh, bodes uh, trouble for places like Nova Scotia, maybe Maine and, and New Brunswick as well. Let's move forward here. And notice here by Sunday morning, now this system is on the verge of uh, impacting or uh, making landfall perhaps in the Texas Gulf Coastal region, tropical storm, maybe even a hurricane. And here comes Teddy undergoing a few millibars of weakening at this time from its peak over the next 12 to 24 hours. And here's that strong high pressure system as we begin the day on Sunday. And again, next few nights in the mid-Atlantic region could see temperatures at least in suburban locations, down to the low or middle uh, 40s. Now let's move forward here. Notice starting to move north or even northeast, but then it starts to interact with that high-pressure system, and it tends to turn to the northwest. And look at this, a 948 millibar low uh, by uh, late Monday night, early Tuesday morning. Here is Maine. Here is Nova Scotia. This is certainly a concern a concerning weather map for Nova Scotia, and maybe Maine and New Brunswick as well, but Nova Scotia is the first uh, land area that it could have an impact on uh, in, in terms of Hurricane Teddy. Again, taking that northwest track at this time as it's surrounded to the north and west by high pressure. Look at this high pressure over the uh, eastern U.S., high pressure over the North Atlantic. There is this blocking high to its north and west, not allowing it to really continue on a northeast track out into the open waters of the North Atlantic, but instead turning to the north and west, and eventually it could uh, very well impact uh, Nova Scotia, Maine, and New Brunswick. At this particular time, and we're talking now Tuesday night of next week, the GFS tends to uh, stall it out before it uh, comes ashore, and then it turns it uh, a little bit back to the north and east, but still a major impact on Nova Scotia. The European model continues a little bit longer to the north and west, also having an impact on uh, uh, Nova Scotia, but even uh, perhaps on uh, New, uh, uh, Maine and New Brunswick here, Canadian provinces of uh, southeastern Canada. So this is something we'll have to monitor closely over the next several days. Hurricane Teddy could be forced to take a turn to the north and west towards Nova Scotia and Maine and New Brunswick here. Let's continue even uh, later into next week. And the interesting thing here is, look what happens here at this particular time. It goes all the way up towards Greenland. This is the southern 
part of Greenland and then it kind of goes back to the north and west. So we've talked uh, uh, several times about the, in the big picture, the, 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 uh, the overall scheme of things, nature tends to distribute heat one of, from the, the tropics towards the poles. And one of the ways it does that is through tropical cyclones, which really are heat machines that form in the tropical region and uh, they tend to bring heat from the tropics to the middle latitudes and in some cases the high latitudes. And look at this, this is the what will remain of Hurricane Teddy all the way up here into the Arctic region uh, if this forecast holds true by the uh, latter part of next week just uh, to the west of Greenland. So quite an interesting scenario here unfolding. Again, keep a close eye on the Gulf Coastal System if you're along the Texas coast, Louisiana, all the way to the Florida Panhandle and certainly keep an eye on Hurricane Teddy uh, in Maine and New Brunswick, but especially in Nova Scotia for possible impact there around Tuesday or Tuesday night of next week. That's it for now for PerspectiveWeather.com. I'm meteorologist Paul Dorian.